Sorry, right, everybody. Welcome back. Um, well, I'm welcoming you back because I'm doing this on the same day, but this might be a separate video. So we're out here in the Granite Dells, and we're going to do a um, another 360 pano and tiny planet. So we've got our GPS signal. We're ready to go. The controller says everything is going well, and I am going to switch to FPV view really quick. So now you can see where we are. And it's a lovely location. We've got full battery power, and we're at 81% on um, on the controller. So I'm going to fire this bad boy up. I'm just moving it away from me so that we can have a conversation. So we're going to do another panoramic. And this is a pretty amazing location to do a panoramic. I'm actually going to drop the elevation of this just a little bit more. So the drone is dropping down in front of me, and it's actually below the cliff that I'm on now. And I would like to do a 360 pano with Litchie's setup. So there we go. I'm just bringing it down a little more. There we go, because I want this to be kind of interesting. Okay, so up on the FPV button, we're going to go ahead and click that. And we're going to do a pano. And on the left-hand side, you can see that the screen changed. We've got some different buttons. I'm going to go ahead and use Litchie's preset up one. That's a little globe right here. And we're going to do an auto pano. And saying that it's at low altitude, I'm going to tell it to go because it's below me, but I'm standing up on top of a crazy cliff. So here it goes executing its pano now. And I'm not going to make you watch all of the single shots, so we'll skip ahead to where its 23rd photo has been taken. And there we go, it's taken the 23rd photo. Now it's going to start trying to download previews for me. I'm going to hit cancel on that, because I don't like doing that. And we're going to do one more, so we're actually doing three out here today. It's warning about low altitude one more time, and it's not really low. So here we go. This should probably be our best one for the day. So we'll make sure to process this. Okay, so we're coming to the end of our third series of images. And there it goes. It's getting photo number 23. I'm going to cancel that download again, just because I'm not a fan. And you don't have to do that, but um, it's just a thing for me. I, I don't like it doing a big loads while while I'm, I'm flying, while it's actually out there hovering. So now we're bringing the drone home and we're going to use the Litchi app to put some of these panos together. So you'll see momentarily, let me turn that right toward me. So here we go, drone's making its way back and a little noisy, but all right, there we go. Okay, so the drone has landed I'm going to leave the drone running and I'm just going over into a shaded area. And what we're going to take a look at now is um, what we've gotten with the drone. So we can actually play with these panos. So there we go. We've got the panos right here from today. And 4 3, 4 3, and 4 3. So I'm going to click on this pano right here on the left. And I'm going to tell it, create a panorama. Now, I have to download from the drone. So the drone's got the SD card in it. But I'm downloading the photos. So this is the part I skipped while I was flying. Because as you can see, downloading these photos takes a moment. So there we go. We're generating the panorama, 30% of the way done. Now, even when I finished this on, um, on my uh, iPhone, I'm still going to offload this when I get back to the office, and I'm still going to, um, I'm still probably going to use PT GUI to manipulate it. So even when you're done with a panoramic, whether it's a tiny planet or a 360 pano, there's going to be some editing that goes on behind there. So you've got to keep that in mind. Download finished. Yes, I would like to create the panorama now. So now it's stitching the panorama, and this takes a little while. So could you imagine? having your drone hovering over a lake while you're stitching together the pano. Do you see any of my control here? 
uh, any further information from the drone? No, you do not. So that's a little concerning to me. And that's why I always cancel the downloads and I don't want to do the stitching while I'm flying. So as you can see here, the stitching is taking a little while. Um, it's uh, memory intensive, so it's really pushing the bounds on the, uh, on the iPhone here because the iPhone is doing a screen recording of this while it's stitching. So we're asking it to do a lot. We're really putting it through its paces today. But when it's finished, we'll actually see a finished 360 pano or a finished 360 tiny planet, which is really cool. So there we go now. So we've got this weird sphere and on the bottom right hand side, we can view the sphere. So there we go. We can take a look at how it did and oop, it got a bad spot right there. Mostly this looks pretty good except for that one location. All right, so I'm going to tap on that and I am going to go back because I can also toggle the tiny planet on. So let's take a look at the tiny planet. Ooh, that's a pretty interesting tiny planet. So I am going to, on the upper right hand corner, I'm going to save that to my photo album. And now I'm going to press the movie button so that it actually does this spinning planet thing. Once again, we are eating up iPhone battery, controller battery, and drone battery while we're doing this. But if you've got more flights that you have in mind for the day, um, doing a lot of these is really going to uh, wear your batteries down and shorten the amount of flying time that you can do. And so that's looking pretty good. And we're going to save that to my photo album as well. And we're going to go ahead and wrap this one up. So you got to see uh, a download and a, um, a download and a creation of a tiny planet and a spherical as well. All right, so we're back, and actually, it's been a day since I recorded the rest of this video. Um, so a day later, and I'm finally getting around to pulling up PT GUI. And PT GUI is one of the tools I use for creating panos. So we saw the pano generated by um, by the Litchi app, and it's a usable pano. A little something went wrong with one part of it. And um, we're gonna we're gonna do one now on PT GUI um, to finish it out. And actually, I need to go to my Final Cut, and this was under AZ Drone. And let's see which one was this. So all right, there we go, Litchi Pano and Waypoint, and then there's the drone Pano photos. So I know that the last one, the one that we processed started at um, number 49 so it's 23 images I'm gonna go ahead and open that and in PT GUI I'm immediately going to align the images really quick all right so the images are aligned and that's looking pretty good I'm gonna close this panorama editor really quick I'm gonna open the advanced tab and I'm gonna go over to the optimizer I want to see how well we did this is not bad, so all right, this is an okay one. So I'm, I'm happy that PT GUI is happy. Now the next part, we can run back to our project assistant and we could just, boom, create the panorama. So I'm gonna go ahead and create the panorama and it's putting it into the folder that I pulled the images out of. So if we wanted to do a different folder, we could do a browse and do a different folder. I'm going to click on create the panorama and by default, PT GUI comes up to do the 360 panorama. There are multiple other projections, which we'll take a look at. And we also talked about in a previous Litchi um, pano video that we've done here. And I'll make sure to link that in the end notes. All right, so it's finished outputting the panorama. And now if we want to see it, PT GUI, we can go to preview and we can actually do a quick preview with the PT GUI viewer. So that's what I'm doing. So it's putting the panorama together. Now this isn't gonna be beautiful. This is, this is a demo, it's a, it's a quick preview. And so that's looking pretty cool. Let's take a look down and see, cause there were some bad spots. Um, there were some bad spots right down here from the Litchi app, but this is looking much better. So I'm gonna, 
bring that back down to size. So this is looking like it will turn into a pretty good piano. So what's my next step? Well, I've already created the piano. It's a, uh, whoop, wrong folder. The piano is actually in my AZ drone folder and piano and waypoint. And I put that under drone panos and there it is right there. So here's our full panoramic. And this doesn't look like a 360 pano, so a little more processing has to happen. Um, to really finish this out, you need to throw it in Photoshop and um, do some additional work, and then finally bring it back into PT GUI and export for web. But I'm going to drag this down into Photoshop, and I'm also, while I'm doing that, quitting the PT GUI viewer because for some reason, uh, it always eats memory on my computer. All right, so our pano is now in Photoshop. So what am I gonna do first? I'm actually gonna go over here to the marquee tool, uh, rectangular marquee, and I'm just stealing a little, whoops, not good, Command Z. So I'm just stealing a little bit of the sky. So we've got this whole blank area because the drone didn't uh, didn't shoot up. It doesn't shoot up. So I just did the free transform tool, which is Command T in Mac, and I'm just overlaying this area. There we go. There we go. And I'm going to hit return. So we've kind of pulled the sky up a little more now. I'm going to deselect that, and from the top, I'm going to do one more rectangular marquee tool. Just going to drag it down here. And now I'm doing command delete to fill that area with white. So if we were to throw this back into PT GUI and export for the web, we would have this cool 360 and we would have this horribly boring blank sky. So I'm gonna do one more thing. I'm gonna grab myself a text tool. And where is the text tool? There it is. And I am just going to make a text layer in Photoshop, because like I said, this would be a really boring 360 because if you tilted the 360 up to look at the sky, you'd have this big white blank area. So you could put another sky in here to continue things, or you could do something fun like this. So there we go, I've got this don't have a boring sky, and I'm just gonna copy that layer by doing Command J. And I'm gonna do Command J one more time. Now we won't risk having a boring sky. I know I'll move this one up here, I'll move this one down here, and I'll move this one up here. And so this has now created my, um, my final piano, and I'm just gonna go up here and hit save, because I want it to still be a JPEG, say okay. So yes, uh, for a more in-depth one, you're going to need a, um, heavier class in Photoshop than we have time for. We're already overrunning on time on this tutorial. So I'm gonna close Photoshop and I saved my JPEG. And now if we look on my little window here, you will see that uh, the image don't have a boring sky, don't have a boring sky, don't have a boring sky. Good deal, so we're looking good. I'm gonna open up PT GUI one more time because mostly what do we wanna do? We want to put our um, 360 panos onto the internet somehow. And so we're going to get to do that. I'm just gonna hit advanced here. So instead of importing images, we've already created a pano. If I go up to tools, there is a publish to website. So it wants to know what file I would like to publish to the website. So I'm going back to that one. There we go. That was uh, number 49, Panorama. I'm going to open that and I am ready to go now. So I'm going to, um, I made sure that uh, we've added the file, then we've got some information over here on the right, which you can just skip past. You can put a new web page title in here if you'd like to. Uh, we don't need to. I'm gonna go ahead and hit the convert button. Now when I hit the convert button, some crazy stuff's gonna happen in that folder. So, it is downsampling all of the images to lay together. And if you look on the right-hand side, you'll see some weird stuff happening here. You also see 
panorama one, panorama two, three, four, five. So it is dropping all of this in the same folder that I had my final panorama. So it might be advisable to you to um, actually make a clean folder for that panorama. But you will see right here, we have panorama.htm. I'm gonna go ahead and double click that. And that is gonna open up one of my web browsers. And on the web browser, there we go. So I can actually embed this panorama on a website. Um, I use WordPress-based WordPress websites, and there are several plugins that will allow you to put panoramas um, on your website. So I'm just gonna hit the, uh, just moving it around for a second. I'm gonna shift to zoom in, uh, command key to zoom out. We can see that I made a little mess here on the edges, so I didn't do a good job of seaming, and I should probably go back in and correct that. But then I wanted to look up at the sky, and so apparently we shouldn't have a boring sky. But if we take a look around, this came out pretty darn good, except for my sloppiness in Photoshop. And we might even be able to see, yep, that's where I am right there. You probably can't make me out, but let's zoom in and we'll take a look. And so that smudge of pixels right there, that smudge is me. All right, everyone, so we're gonna wrap this one up and I really hope you enjoyed this. So you did get the opportunity to see um, Litchie put together a tiny planet and a pano. And you've also gotten to see how we can use a third party tool like PT GUI to really refine things when we get back to the office or back home. And with that said, we're going to wrap this one up because I don't want to keep you any longer than I have to.